Tana, welcoming to uh, welcoming all the students and this. So yeah, this is uh, uh, my name is Sai Bolneni and uh, I'm a, a Tana uh, regional coordinator for North Central Region, uh, which which is like Minneapolis area. And uh, I do have other colleague uh, Nagamalleswara Panchmarti. He is uh, another regional coordinator from um, North Carolina, so that called as Appalachian region from the Tana uh, perspective. So yeah, Tana, Tana like you know, uh, welcomes everyone and, and uh, uh, we are thankful to leadership like you know, Anjay Chaudhrigaru, Tana president, current president and community service coordinator, Raja Kaskurtigaru, so who is giving this opportunity for coordinating this effort and, uh, and Naga is also uh, working with me to coordinate this whole effort. So today we are uh, going to uh, learn like a couple of things in basics of machine learning. Basically like Tana uh, is uh, presenting this for the aiming for the middle school kids to increase their STEM knowledge, uh, uh, to increase their STEM knowledge for all the children and young adults and everyone. So this is the best opportunity to go uh, take the introduction of this. And as someone is asked in this class, so probably there may be a chance like we, we, we take the feedback and uh, pursue for the next steps. Like if uh, there is a, maybe, maybe may, may not be like, you know, we will try to uh, schedule some course or something. So that based on the feedback, we will pursue and good. So today we have, um, uh, thank you, Ravindra Karajgaru. So Ravindra Karajgaru, he works in uh, Macassan uh, as a senior analyst. And uh, uh, he has like, you know, a lot of knowledge in pharmacy related software and uh, you know, working and uh, he lives in Detroit and uh, he recognized multiple times for the innovation and customer focus from uh, uh, the public. And he's a coach in robotics as well. And uh, uh, now for the uh, uh, robotics for machine learning. And um, yeah, that's all. And uh, the today's session, like, you know, uh, he will uh, introduce and he will uh, teach the very high level uh, for, from the machine learning perspective. Uh, once uh, uh, the class is uh, done, like, you know, uh, we'll take a couple of questions from the students and he will answer those. So right now, like, you know, uh, I will uh, ask Naga to speak a few words, so uh, then uh, we'll take it forward from there. Yeah, thank you, Sai. Uh, good evening, all, and thank you, Ravinder Akrajgaru, coming forward and uh, give uh, machine learning skills, introducing machine learning skill to the kids and uh, uh, Otana young generation. And thank you, uh, good evening, and thank you all again. And uh, uh, thank you for using this opportunity and we uh, encourage the feedback and inputs and what is your uh, interest and skills in the chat uh, and uh, then uh, we can uh, take the questions and all. Yeah, thank you, Sai. Uh, and handing, handing over to Sai. Yeah, thank you, Naga. And uh, uh, we thankful to Tana Total Leadership and so and uh, I think I see uh, Raja Kaskurtigaru, Community Services Coordinator from Tana Leadership, joined in this meeting as well. Raja Kaskurtigaru, are you there? If if you are there, like you know, uh, just un unmute and uh, say a few words. Uh, Sorry, I'm here. Please go ahead. Um... Yeah. Mm, thank you, Raja Garu. Um, yeah, uh, the introductions are over, and uh, now like we are. Uh, I am handovering the session to Ravinder Akraj Garu, and uh, he will go. He's going to take care. Next 40, 45 minutes. Once that is done, like you know, we'll take a couple of questions. So, uh, if anyone have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send us in a chat so that we can ask uh, Ravinder Garu so that he can tell us. Meanwhile, while class is running, like if you have any questions come across, uh, please send us in a chat. Thank you, and uh, it's all. Floor is yours, Ravinder Garu. Thanks, Sai Garu, Nagaru, Rajagaru, uh, giving us the opportunity to present this. Uh, uh, screen sharing disabled and don't that day. Oh, the most disabled participant screen sharing. Yeah. I will. I, I will. get. 
I will make a co-host only so that you can. Sure. Yes. Share. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Share screen. Hi, kids. Um, welcome to machine learning. So today, um, uh, I'm going to talk about the basics of machine learning. Okay, we'll go through overview of what machine learning is. You might, some kids, some of you might have heard the term, some of you might just heard your parents talk about it, some might know a little bit of machine learning. And we have to understand that today, we have machines everywhere, everywhere in our homes, outside, you walk outside, and they're helping in and out. We probably sometimes knowingly know it, sometimes we don't. But everything, if you start looking around, you will find there are machines which are learning. Alexa, thermostats, some things we don't even pay attention to. So today my idea is to spark an interest in you guys so that you will start to see the potential of machine learning. By the time you kids start growing up, this is a, more, a very big upcoming field. So I'm hoping that we spark the interest I work for uh, a, a team called Robo Rhinos who are into robotics. Um, they are starting to use machine learning now, but we'll initially go through the basics. I will not, I promise you, I'll not bore you with too much of technical stuff. I want to create an interest and we learn a basics of what it is, what it does, how can you go, where can you go to start learning machine learning, okay? With that, let me start the presentation. Okay. What is the agenda for today? I am going to talk about machine learning and what else are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about what actually is machine learning? What are the types of machine learning? How does it work? What are some of the applications you're going to see? Do you see in daily life? Can you think of something? Can you start relating? Probably after this class, I'm, I'm hoping that as you look at things, you will start to think does this use machine learning or is it not? Can I do something to use it myself? Now, I will also do a small demo uh, with Scratch uh, and the machine learning. So we'll see how that works. So you'll get a basic feel of machine learning. And then I'll also show you a website where after we are done with this today, you, you kids can hop onto that website and trust me, it's pretty simple. You can start learning it yourself. You can start playing. You don't need any elders. It's a drag drop and I'll go through it a little bit. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Scratch or are you have used Scratch. So that makes my job a little bit easier, okay? So with that, let me start. What is machine learning? There is another term called artificial intelligence. You guys might have seen movies, iRobot, Transformers, these kind of things, right? What is that? What is actually artificial intelligence. I'll get to that also. And then we'll get to what is machine learning. Okay. Let me broadly say what is machine learning basically or artificial intelligence. They're used interchangeably, but in general, they mean you're teaching a machine to learn things by itself, right? It's teaching you what it is. Given I give you some knowledge of it, it then is able to tell me the answers when I ask something else. Okay, how far we go is, is a little bit there, but that's what machine, I'm teaching machines to do things for me, to learn from what I taught, right? Now, artificial intelligence is just a very broad term we talk about. Like, keep you will hear artificial intelligence. Like I said, movies, what is it? I am programming machines to be able to think and act like humans. Now, there are various levels to it, and we'll see some of it actually, so that, you guys get a little bit familiar with. So to, just to give, it's, it's, a, it's a very popular technique where I give it some input, it takes and learns from it, right? It learns, it's telling me, okay, if I tell it the weight of a person, then if I give another weight of person, it can predict. So we are trying using machines to predict. Now, what is, why can't humans do it? Can we do it? Absolutely, we can do it. But why do we then use machine? Why do we need machine learning in the first place? Because there is so much data that comes in today, right? You get thrown five subjects in your classroom. You have to learn all of them. Now that's a simple thing, right? 
you're still confined to certain chapters, certain things, and you're told within a year, you're good luck. Let's say somebody throws 100 chapters at you. Humanly, is it possible? Certainly, but you need a longer time to do it. We are using machine learning to help us with that, right? So what is next? What does machine learning? There are simple programs or actually complicated programs, but I won't bore you with the details, but what it does is it takes the data and it learns from it. It learns depending on, it tries to divide the data into multiple units. And there are factors I'll go into. And then it says, okay, since you told me previously, this is what it was, I can tell you next when you ask me a similar question, how humans do it. We don't teach you each and everything, right? But because I told you something, you're able to correlate that data. You say, okay, you told me this was something. Since this is similar, it probably is. And the more you talk like a human being, like we teach your kids, okay, what is an app? What is a dog? What is this? What is machine learning? You are learning constant. Similarly, machine tends to learn the more you start talking to it, the more you start to give it the data, it starts to build its repository of knowledge. And based on that, it will start to give you better and better results, right? It's learning as we humans, as we start growing up, like kids grow up, they learn starts with ABC, then they learn words. Similar to that, you're throwing things at machine, but in a bigger way, in a bigger fashion, right? it starts to learn, it tries to make meaning out of it, right? And I'll show you some examples how we use that as we go ahead and do that, right? So it's it's a vast domain, it's evolving, it's progress in last 10 years, it's gone leaps and bounds. Everything that you do, you order something in Amazon, your dad goes and buys your toy, right? It learns, next time your dad logs in and it sees a toy which is bought, it says, okay, this, your dad is interested and in it. it tries to give you that idea. Songs, for example, right? It tries to listen a couple of songs you'll have liked and then it builds and says, okay, if another song comes similar, I'm going to tell this person that there is something out there, right? Now, this is what it is. Let's take a small kid, for example, right? When we are young, we are told there are apples. How do you recognize them? Because somebody taught you apples there are different type of apples there are different type of tomatoes right or oranges i don't always tell a kid every single color that's possible but yet humans are intelligent they can figure it out the kids if you show a similar apple if i were to show him this apple but similarly show him this he probably will identify it as an apple he will not say tomato he might make a couple of mistakes initially if i suddenly show him that but then when i talk to him and says no this is also an apple then he takes another shade of green he tries to correlate that and he learns from it humans are one of the best best human brain is one of the best machines out there the past the possibilities are endless you know we we don't get taught but you observe your parents and you start to learn that's why you say we have to be careful in front of guys because you're smart. So you will learn, you'll learn. You'll look at your dad turning a screw with a screwdriver and you know how to do it. He doesn't have to sit you, but you can look at his actions and learn. Similarly, the different types of things, right? You're classifying, your mind is automatically taking all this information and trying to put it into its own buckets as I would call it, right? It says, okay, apples, I have a certain shape they have a certain color and they have a certain taste, right? If I were to cut an apple and give it to a kid, he still probably will figure it out. That's where we are training machines now. Humans have their intelligence. They have other things where they can build on it and then give you an answer, right? You don't have to tell everything to a human. It's better he learns more and more, but his, his experience, the amount he has learned, the inputs he's talking from his looking for his parents, his friends, his outsized teachers is what is called. That's where we are trying to train machines to become intelligent like humans, right? Previously, that was not the case. Now we are teaching computers to start going and start learning.
start teaching us and give me a, it's making my job easier. Treat, always treat machine like I tell my kids as your friend who helps you not to substitute you because humans can still make a lot of decisions which machines at this point are still reaching. It's pretty advanced, but it's still there are things humans can do. Emotions, for example, right? We are training machines to now start getting into that domain, right? So that's what machine I'm taking a machine, telling it, if I give you this kind of stuff, I don't have to tell you every single thing. I won't tell you every single apple that's out there, but based on certain things in the apples, if I give you a similar type of a thing, can you identify it as an apple? Can you identify it as an orange? And I'm taking very simple examples, right? Things get can get very complicated as your dad or mom might be working in an organization, we take this to a whole new level, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Let's start simple, for example, right? What is machine learning? You see a lot of you have seen Nest thermostats in our homes, like the smart thermostats, right? I went and bought a smart thermostat, right? I, I put it out there and I, the first day I said, I want at 10 o'clock to be 70, 68 degrees because I'm going to go to bed. In the morning, I get up at eight o'clock and say, okay, I want it to be 68. I'm not telling it every day. If you look at that thing, ask your dad after you're done with the call to show you, it has picked up my habits and it automatically learned, okay, Ravinder thinks in the night it needs to be 68, but morning it needs to be this. I am not telling it on Monday, I want this, I want it Tuesday. It automatically starts building a schedule. That's what the machine is learning from some basic data I gave it and starts to build. So some of the things in our homes, which is happening, right? which we don't even realize that's happening, automatically starts building that stuff by itself, right? Okay. Now, you will hear as you grow up, or you probably have heard, like I was talking, something called artificial intelligence, right? Think of movies, artificial. Movies dramatize a little bit, but that's where it's starting. We have machines and I know, but it starts to think. It does some bad things, but we are looking to do good things with it, right? We are trying to help us out, weather predictions. Do I, should I go to the school tomorrow? Like your kids get up in the morning and go to weather and say, how is it? At least, especially in the Northeast here, there might be snow. Do I need to wear a jacket, right? These things. Now, the three terms you will hear is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, right? Uh, sorry, Naga, you have your hand raised. I wanted to say that um, I actually watched a few uh, videos before on this. Doesn't it take like a, so a YouTube robot might like see what you view YouTube things that you watch and then it'll just try using more. So imagine this, it'll take like a huge test and then whatever gets the highest percentage correct randomly, it just yeah. random. You don't know how it works. It doesn't know how it works. It just random chance, but then that will work on other things too, right? Correct. It's creating patterns. What does machine learning? Then I'll get into that a little bit, right? You're right. All these things are, when I was giving an example of this thing, it's trying to create a pattern out of it. It's taking a feature, it's classifying, it's trying to create a pattern. I don't have to tell it everything, right? That's where it starts to create a pattern and tries to apply. It. Humans do it, we don't realize it, but we do the same thing. And I'll come to an example. So, you will hear artificial intelligence. It's the, it's the broadest form of what we call intelligence to machines, okay? That's the core outer area, like treat as the big box, right? It is just saying, I want to make machines, okay? Think, act, and behave like humans. When I say behave, it means predict, analyze, answer me the questions. There is another area, I'm not going to get into that, but let's keep it at that level. Then machine learning comes in, which is a smaller subset. Like the charts you go pie charts within a, within a circle, the sum pieces of it is called machine learning. It learns from the data you give to it. Like you said, it picks up what you were trying to do, then uses that to analyze a pattern and then starts to learn from it. And there are various aspects or different types of machine learning, but I'll keep it simple for you guys. I don't want to 
bore you to death because there is a lot to learn. We'll go step by step, right? Then deep learning, okay? Deep learning is something neural network. It's, it's very, very specific. This is where it starts to think for itself. This is where movies, it learns, it observes you. And also like we humans react and adapt. It tries to adapt, right? Simple example, like machine learning. I have a lamp in my house, for example. I say, turn off the lamp, turn on the lamp right? I am telling it that these are the words you need to look for. Alexa, for example, right? It says, hey, Alexa, I, Alexa, my voice, it tries to learn from it, right? So for a lamp example, I'm going to say, turn lamp off, turn lamp on. It keys into those words and it starts to build a database out of it. It tries to put it together. Can, does this person say one of these words? then I will turn on the lamp or turn off the lamp, right? Deep learning is a little bit further. Like humans, it tries to interpret the meaning of it. What that means is if I walk into a room and say it is dark, right? What is the meaning of that? I need light, right? That's where it interprets and say, oh, even though the word the fan on is not there, it learned and said, what he means by it, he needs a light on and it kicks it off. There's there's a lot to it, but this is what it's, it's yes, Nanda. Yeah, I, I wanted to relate to that. Um, our Google, whenever we say like good morning or something, it would just tell uh -huh. us the news and stuff like that, temperature. Correct, correct, correct. So it, it's it's learning from some things. It's, it's doing things, it's learning the behaviors, it's, looking at certain aspects and then trying to interpret as we humans would do because nobody tells us everything, no, right? We learn. I didn't tell you a fan. I said, it's dark. You automatically know to go and switch on the light, right? As we are growing up, we are learning things. So that is a broad categorization. We'll start hearing artificial intelligence. People will say machine learning. People say deep learning. It's specialized as you go from top, from artificial intelligence to deep learning, it becomes more and more complicated and more and more sophisticated, right? And more complex, right? That's where it starts to get into it. Now. Um, excuse me, I just have a question. Yeah. I just have yeah, a sure. question. So for example, um, so you come home every night and then you tell um, like Siri or something to switch on the lights at like 6 p.m. every single night, like every mm -hmm. evening. And then, so like would machine learning be like when you, um, so the machine, so the thing learns from that and then without you telling it to switch on, it switches on at 6 p.m. every night. Would that could. be machine learning? That, that could be machine learning too. It could be as simple as you program something, right? You could program the saying and say every 6 a.m. just turn it on. It doesn't know, it just turns it on but it could also see you and learn from it, right? So it could be making it a simple computer program or you can make it where it starts to look at your behavior, your mood and dims the light, right? It can go into yeah. that, right? There is a yeah. lot that you can do, like to your example, you, the lot, lot we can do. As simple as I can quote, previously in our, when we used to write programs, I've read, if it is six o'clock, then do this. If it is 10 o'clock, but if a, 11 o'clock occurs, the machine doesn't know how to behave because I never told it to do, right? Yeah. But you, we have taken that to a step further now. It learns, oh, he comes at 7.30, he tries to sleep at 10 o'clock or he's trying to watch a movie. Should I turn things down, right? So mm -hmm. it depends on how far we are going into it and how far we are teaching it. All is the data that you're giving it is what it's learning from. And then deep learning is where it starts to think in its own as a human being. Because if you're watching a movie and you have your light on and your dad walks by, to create the effect, he automatically turns off or dims the lights because he want to give you that effect, right? Nobody told him to do it. He knows, right? That kind of stuff. Now, there are three type of machine learning algorithms you'll generally realize, okay? They are supervised learning, 
there's unsupervised learning, and there's reinforcement learning. Now, what is supervised learning? You give it an input and you tell an output, right? And I, I will give you a simple example in the next slide actually, but unsupervised learning is where I don't tell what it is, I give it a data and ask it to make its own decision a little bit, right? And then reinforcement learning is where I tell what is wrong. I don't exactly tell what to do. I, I don't tell it, I tell it this is right, this is wrong, and you make your own decision and change based on your own behaviors, okay? That's what the three basic models are for learning actually. So one is supervised. Everything is being told, you're telling, if I give you two plus two, that is always equal to four, right? If I tell you there's a cat, that's a cat. Unsupervised, I'm not telling you what, three, I didn't tell you three plus three, but based on what I gave you, you can make your own decisions, right? Reinforcement, if I say three plus three and you say seven, I'm saying, no, it's wrong. Then you learn from it. Then you say, okay, it is six or some other input. So it's basically supervised. It's machine learns from the data I'm giving it. Okay, unsupervised, I'm not giving you any data. I'm asking just no training data, meaning I'm not telling you exactly, I'm not labeling it, right? I'm telling you, this is the set of inputs you have learn from it and figure out what you can do with it, right? And reinforcement, it starts to learn based on the answers that are given. It says, okay, that's not the right answer that I gave. So next time I won't give you that answer when you ask the same question, right? So, yeah. Uh, Excuse me? Yeah. I have a question. So sure. like every like, Monday, if you uh -huh. like go in a car to like buy groceries, and mm -hmm. if they like, put the GPS on and mm -hmm. the machine, so then like you come back and then mm -hmm. like every Monday you go to the grocery, we like, would it like record that data and then like, like automatically put it when you like go at the correct time? Just good, to good question. Actually, I'll give you a good example that happened to me actually. You're right. So one of my friends used to come and it's related to Google Maps. That's why I'm bringing that up. One of my friends, used to come, come to my place on a Saturday, okay? He used to stay, we used to talk, my kids used to talk to him, and then he would leave for his home. One day, we noticed that as he was getting up at around 8.30, his phone popped up with Google Maps and said, the time to your home is this much, and this is the route you need to take. We were a little bit concerned I mean, I, I'm sure your dads will understand why we were, but we were like, how does it know, right? How does it know? Because we never told it. He never opened the phone to type anything in. But what we realized is like the past two weeks, he was coincidentally at my place around the same time and around the same time was trying to leave. It followed a pattern, it learned, and automatically around 8.30, it said, oh, this person wants to go home. I'm going to tell him which route to take, how much time is it going to take, and what the weather will be like. That's to your analogy. It will learn. It's taking all that data, all the data that you're doing. So I tell my kids to be careful. When you're saying Alexa, it is recording and sending somewhere to record, and then it picks pieces, right? So you want to be careful what you want it to learn, right? Yes, and thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you had a question, Mankesh? Vedak Shai, you have a question? You have your hand raised. Um, so for machines, do we need to specifically show them what they need to learn or will they like normally learn by watching us do the work? Uh, it's a tricky question, but let me, let me go here and then we'll come to that, okay? That's a good question, okay? That's a good question. What you're asking, can I see and learn? Do humans see and learn? Yes, we do, right? I, I observe, I, my son observes me and sees what does he do when the TV doesn't work? Okay, he presses this button, this button it learns, right? So let me go a little bit further and we'll come to that, okay? Um, supervised learn, okay. What is supervised like I was telling you? I'm telling it, I'm saying, this is banana, no. This is Apple, yes, right? I mean, I'm identifying 
every data I'm giving to it. I'm saying, okay, when I use see this and this characteristic, identify it with this apple, right? That's where it's, I'm telling everything to it. It could also go into reinforce because I'm telling it's right or wrong, but the basic idea is I'm giving you some data and I'm saying, okay, I want to label, you know how in our school we used to label when you were a kid, they would have pictures of uh, apples, tomatoes, all the fruits, and they they look at you and say, can you identify that? You come home and your dad shows you a different apple. And then be like, oh, okay, that's an apple. But some of your teacher already said, this is an apple. This is how it looks like, right? Unsupervised, to your point, unsupervised. I am giving this piece of data or the picture to a computer and I'm not telling this is a cat. I'm not telling this is a dog. I'm saying, okay, make your decision. A whole bunch of things run in the background. Okay, a program runs. It segregates these pieces into two different parts here. It says, okay, this looks similar. It has a tail. It's height as this, colors. So I'm going to categorize this into one group and another group. It's learned. I never told it. I can label it later and say it's dog. If you go and give it a similar kind of dog, it will be able to, based on what it has, it says, oh, okay, this looks like a dog or, or does it look like a cat? Because I know some characters are categorized based on that. There's a lot deeper into it, but it's, that's a broad idea of what it's doing. The third one I was telling reinforced learning, right? If my son teaches me how to drive in Mario Kart, you know, he tells me, okay, press the RB button. When you're going into a slide, you need to hold this button. I'm bad at it. Trust me. I, I can keep with him. He just bats the hell out of me every time. But he, he teaches me. He's like, so I make my own decision. And I'll say, okay, if I go this curve, I have to press an RB this level. Slower, right? That's where I'm learning. He's saying, no, dad, that's wrong. If you press too much, you're going to lose it. Right? That's where you learn. You're echoing. Uh, I'm not sure. Could, did... Yeah, could I say something? Yes. Um, so do you know how the, the I yeah, do you know the test it says um do you are you a robot or not? The first test is already confirmed and like it'll tell it'll they already know. But if you get the first part of the test correct, it'll mm -hmm. use the second part of the test for random results. It'll see, um, it'll help the AI to know mm -hmm. if you, it, how it should react to so like, are you a human test? Yeah, so it's like, learning it's, from things that it's getting the input as and then learning from it, okay? Yeah, it's, uh, so like, there's just millions of random uh, plugs connected in the thing. And then it's like, okay, if you connect these two plugs, it'll, people don't know how it works, but they generate, they make a code that just says, randomly generate with this math equation, uh, mm -hmm. make these two plugs go together randomly. And mm -hmm. then, and then once, it's, and then it's going to test those plugs. It'll just randomly answer, but it's not random because those plugs told it to do it. So it'll find the right math equation or that. Yeah. Um, and then it'll um, learn from it. Right. Like, all right. Really. So then it's, it's learning. So I know you have a lot of you have questions. Can we, Saigar, can we, you want me to hold the questions off in terms of time and then answer or is, more, is it okay to? No. Yeah, uh, uh, we will hold the questions, Andy. So yeah. guys, kids, like, you know, wait for the whole presentation. So after that, we'll open up the question and answer so that it's easy for everyone. Okay. Okay. Uh, hold your questions, write down your questions, and then we can have a Q&A session that we'll go through it. Okay. So the next one. How does traditional computer, what do you mean by even traditional computer? You guys are so smart now that you've gone into a world where I, I don't even know by the time you grow up with something called a traditional programming. Um, when we were growing up, okay, what's a traditional programming? I type everything. I tell it what to do. Every single thing I have to tell the computer, right? I, I write a program, I say, if you see an input of two and you see an input of three, or you say, see a word called divide, okay, then you need to do this. If it's a red, then it's an, it's an apple. If it's an orange, it's, it's an orange color, right? I have to write everything. If I miss one thing, the computer didn't know what to do with it. It will error out. It's a, I don't know what you're talking about. 
I, I don't know, or it'll start to behave weird because I didn't tell every single condition. So when we were writing, we had to tell, we think of most of the scenarios, right? If you're driving a car, like a humans, we don't tell. If you're driving a car and you have to turn right, if I forget to tell, a new road comes in, which now has straight, right? A human being can think for himself, right? He knows, oh, I always need to go right here. I need to always go right here and reach my home. And in computers, we had to tell every single thing. If I miss something, things would break in the field, right? I don't get what I want. Simple, simple things. When I'm going out to get some medicine, if I don't tell every single thing, it doesn't know what to do with it. Now, over the years, something called machine learning came as we're talking. It's an automated process. It tries to gather the data that it, I don't have to tell. I will tell a five-year-old weighs, for example, 50 LPs. A 10-year-old or a seven-year-old weighs this much. A 15-year-old weighs this much. In traditional programming, if I were to give it a, a seven-year-old, because I didn't tell it what to do, it's I don't know. In machine learning, as you go deeper, it can take the data, all this data, okay, make patterns out of it and say, okay, if your five-year-old was this much and your 10-year-old is this much you're telling me, maybe I can in interpret the data and give you a rough answer, right? The more data you give it, the you know, so if I also give it a six-year-old and an eight-year-old, it'll that output or the result that's going to give me will be much, much more um, confidence. It'll be much more nearer to the perfect answer that I want it to have, okay? That's the basic thing between what traditional programming used to be and what it's coming into. We are not teaching everything, it's learning. Alexa is there at home. I tell, hey Alexa, hi Alexa, can you play me a pro? It knows, it's learning everything from it. Google Maps is learning. As I drive to somebody mentioned, as I drive, it can predict. It knows if I'm going, it needs to go, the weather needs to be shown, the traffic. All those things are come happening in the background, right? So to an example, when I walk in, if it knows by 10 o'clock, I need to show up. So these things, it's learning on its own. In our companies, we use this on a much bigger scale to predict things, but for you kids, at least to start with, right? This is what's happening. Like, for example, if I have a camera stationed outside my door and I, I can teach it like my family members, and if somebody else come, it can alert me and say, somebody's trying to knock on your door. Or it can alert me and say, hey, my son, whoever, what's his name is, Aditya, is on the door, right? It's learning. You can train it to do things like that, right? So this is how, in a nutshell, what we have talked about. How does machine learning work? What does it work? It's getting some data, like when you go out, when you come in, what is the color of an apple? All that is input data being given to it, continuously being fed, right? The more you tell it, the more it, it's better at predicting data. It then takes that data and starts to analyze, okay? When I say analyze, it says, okay, this is this, these are the features I'm gonna put into one category. I can do this with it. I can identify similar things and stuff. Then it starts to find patterns based on what it is. Am I tall? Am I short? Am I like, I, do I look like a one? Like for example, if you go to your friend's party, you may not know everybody at the party, but based on your experiences, because you have seen high school kids, you have seen middle school kids, you have seen a person, you can immediately say, okay, that probably looks like a middle schooler. He's probably who does sports because you see athletic or he's talking about something and stuff like that, right? And you human, we have automatically, your brain is categorizing the data and says, nothing, nobody told you, you don't even, you have not even met the person, right? But based on your experiences, based on what you have gone through, all the thing, your brain automatically, okay, it's, this is somebody's dad, right? He's a male, he's probably in his 50s, or he's 12 years old, or probably he's 13 years old, right? All this is what's happening in the background, your mind is doing. Same thing, machine is learning now, it's picking up all these things. And when it sees something similar, it can automatically say, oh, okay, this is what it is like, right? And then what we do is prediction. And then it stores all the data. If it goes wrong and I tell it, hey, he's not a middle schooler, 
he is this because on some other characteristics, it will learn from it. Next time it sees that input with the other, other features in there, it'll say, no, no, no. I initially told him middle schooler, but I was corrected because this is what, and then that says, no, the correct answer is now this, right? Uh, I won't bore you too much with this, but just to give you an idea, like it's using some programs to like, we were talking about it takes the data, classifies the data into its own patterns, like oranges, color, everything, and then tries to make future predictions, right? So that's what this gist is. Now, machine learning, where is ML used? Everywhere, like you guys are giving me examples. Pretty much it's becoming ubiquitous in our life. You don't realize it, but it's happening all day long. Small, small things that we are buying from Amazon today, small, small robots that we are buying. We have robot, it cleans my house automatically. How does it know? It needs to bump into things. It needs to stay into object. It can detect what's a proper object, which it needs to avoid which needs to go over, it can automatically figure based on images that's being, it's learning based on that, right? The like Google, for example, is learning. If you go and search for a pair of jeans or a clothes or a ball that you like, the next time you try to go and something similar is coming, it will pop, pop up an ad, right? And say, hey, or a movie, for example, or a song, for example, you watch, or let's say I watch family movies or I watch Transformer kind of movies, right? The next time similar comes, it says, based on what you've watched, you can look at this. Like if you go into Amazon today and go into Prime Video or one of those, you will see based on your previous, it'll say suggested movies are this. How does it know? Because I was watching Transformers. It picked up a similar kind of a movie and told me, hey, you might also like this. Let's say I don't watch those and I switch to watching comedy. It learns from that and says, okay, now we're starting to watch comedy. Let me suggest some comedy films for it, right? Those kind of things. Netflix does the same thing. It's a huge database. As you try to do it, if you go into Netflix today, the moment you sign in with yours, it says, oh, the new movies are, and this is what you can watch based on past experiences, right? That's what, so ML is being used, like I said, Nest Learn, Nest in your home learns it. Small, small things, my watch can predict things. Small, small things are now being used. We don't even realize things. It can warn you, it can help you, right? Now, so now I'm coming to the team that I'm a part of, RoboRiners. We are RoboRiners. We are part of a FTC robotics team, okay? We do robotics, which is basically you build a robot like this one, okay? And you're given a task to do in this year, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to take these three things, a duck, a ball, and there's a cube like this. And we are supposed to put it into a called a shipping hub, which is nothing but a three layered structure where you take it based on where the thing is. This year, Google partnered with something, an organization called First, who are into robotics, are familiar with it. They partnered with them and said, we are going to introduce machine learning. They said, okay, we have trained these two things to the machine to recognize what this is. But you can build your own things. So what our team did, they built this 3D cone. Now, my robot has no idea what this cone is, right? It doesn't know what to do with it. What did it do? We took pictures of this, different angles, videos of this, and labeled it as a cone in different angles, okay? That's the data. Then we put it to, I won't bore you with all this, but let's say I put it to a program. We upload it to a website, Google's website and say, run your programs on it. It then, the more, so we initially took three angles. We went to a place, this cone, took three uh, videos and uploaded it. We named what each one is, okay, and sent it. Because it's a small set of data, the confidence with which it could identify it said, okay, I'm going to identify probably with 60% confidence because there was a light thing, the number of videos taken. Then we said, okay, let's take few more videos. It took few more. Now it said, okay, now you, since you've given me more data in different light conditions, I can clearly identify this. I'm with 90% confidence. The moment you show it, I can identify it. So we used today to detect this and Based on this, we take a doc or something and put it in. But all that is machine learning. We taught the machine, hey, you see this object, you know what it is, 
and this is what you need to do with it. Now, if I place it in a different color, it can probably figure some things out as far as the lighter shade read, but it can figure it out. The more I teach it, the more it learns. So this year for robotics, Google partnered and said, okay, you guys, machine learning is becoming big. Let's start introducing the kids. So I would suggest to kids who are interested or who are already there, this is a good way of getting and getting your hands down onto machine learning slowly. Years to come, this will become so common that we won't be thinking like we are thinking today as a machine learning as something totally different, okay? And this year's uh, competition we call is something called free frenzy, something to do with logistic based on what we are, but now I'm gonna take you to a small demo I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna do that with something called Scratch. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar what Scratch is, but Scratch is like a basic UI tool which you drag, drop, you don't need to write code, you don't need to know what it is. You just say, okay, drag this, drop this, and it automatically builds in the background. So it's a very, very simple. I like the tool because it's, it's pretty so simple that I don't, I'm not intimidated by, I don't know how to write it. I just say, drag, hey, do this for me. And it does what it does, right? It creates a code in the background and runs it. So, and this is where, just for uh, folks who want to go, if you don't know about it, I'm sure a lot of you have used it. So you're pretty familiar with it. Now, this is what Scratch looks like, right? And this is what it does. So I, I'm going to show you a couple of demos of how, before I go there, um, this is a very good website for you kids. Like it's Google the machine learning for kids and you'll probably bump into this, IBM. And I'll show you that site. It's, it's got a simple project. It gives you a basic idea of machine learning. You can play with it, you can create it. There are step-by-step -step instructions of how to do this. You literally can go step-by-step-by-step by step by step and create it, everything, right? And it's completely free. You don't need to do anything much. You don't need to register. Only if you're using certain things, you need to register, but even that's free. So you can have your parents register for you. You can go and create those things, okay? Let me see if I can do a quick demo for you guys. So this, is, oh, I, I wish I could hide this actually. Where is the hide gone? Send us. Sorry, wish I could. So, machine Can learning you for kids. Send us the right? link in the chat. I'm sorry. Somebody said something. Can you send the link in the chat? Oh yeah, I will. I will. Yeah. I'll Can post you the, send link the link in the chat. Yeah. For uh, for the website, you mean? Can you also send us scratch link? I will. I will post it the link in the chat once I'm done. I, I'll post in the WhatsApp also, so uh, can parents post, can let you know too. Can you okay. post both of the links actually? Will do. I will do that. I will do that. Okay. So this is Scratch. Okay. These are these are simple programs. Simple. Pretty simple programs. Okay. And you can go through it. It's got step by step. And we will play with this, but this is they already have some templates, right? They already have templates for you to work with. You don't need to create everything from scratch, okay? You, you take this, it already has basic, you can drag drop that stuff and do it. You can go to project templates and you can load whatever you want. Now, first thing I want to do is demo, simple application called Emoji. What is that? So I created a simple application. I said, okay, I want you to cover my face when I move my face around, okay? So it's starting up. Uh, is the camera not, not taking it? Let me refresh and see if I can load it. You need to turn off your camera and zoom for the camera to work in Scratch. Uh, yeah, you have to turn off the camera and zoom. I had it on, so it should be able to pick it up. I was doing it earlier, so it should be able to pick it up. Let's see. If you turn off your camera and zoom, it'll work. Ah. So I need to go to, where am I? Let me go to Zoom. Ah, oh, where is my... Uh, stop video, right? Thank you, guys. Mm, why is it not? 
ね。うん。We can't see you. Sorry? We can't see you. Like your video s c r e e n Yeah, are you able to see my screen though? Yes. No, wait, yeah, we, can, we can see the screen. Your screen is clear. My screen is clear, right? So that's what, let's see the demo. I was hoping that my camera is what, because that's what I wanted to work so that you can see what it's doing actually. No, 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 oh, we can't see your face. Oh yeah. We oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I pulled up a program. I just dragged and drop a few stuff. And what I, I'm telling you to do, I'm saying, hey, this emoji, when I move my face, okay, cover my face, right? Simple thing, nothing. Fancy, you've seen that happen in iPhones and all those phones today, right? Let's see, see? You guys see that? Can you guys see that emoji covering my face? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Face everywhere, yes. check it out. And it's, it's covering my face. It doesn't want to show my face, right? I can play with a lot of things on this, but question here is what is machine learning in this what did i do i didn't do anything all i did is i drop drag drop and then i said okay here if the size of the set the size of the emoji to the size of my left eye and set my x coordinate of this emoji to this to my nose what is machine learning here can you guys think what is machine learning yes it's tracking Nikesh? your face so the emoji follows you wherever you move your face how did that happen? I never told it how my face looks like. You I know your it. camera. You coded it. It must have been blocks that have the um, scratch face must have shows like that. Like the face 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 face. Let me answer that question. Good. You guys are trying. I like that. You're right. But I did not tell how my face. I did not do anything in Scratch to tell how my face looks like. What happened is somebody in the background took a lot of faces. How does it know what a nose is? How does it know what a left eye is? Somebody took 35, 40,000 pictures of different, different faces and identified a nose for it and identified an eye for it, identified face. So now it can look at the pattern and say, oh, this looks like a face. This is an eye, this is a nose. So he's telling me, as far as I can find the pattern, I can find his nose, I'll start to move the emoji, right? That's where machine learning happened in the background. I didn't tell it, somebody else did it for me. But that's the beauty of it. I'm just using that. Now I can enhance this to do a lot more other things. Okay, so that's where the machine learning is. Now let me show you another one demo that I had. Can you be able to send us a link for this Scratch uh, project? Uh, yes, I will, I will. This is a project that I created, but this exact thing is there in the link that I'm going to send you. All these projects, the two projects I'm going to show you are there. You literally probably can go a free account or help have your parents create a simple account. And then you can drag and drop and drag and drop and play everything with this, right? Now I'm going to- Are you going to go to YouTube tutorial? I'm sorry? You could go to your YouTube tutorial to learn the code too. Sure. Now, Let's start this one. This is what I call a smart classroom, okay? Before I go there, let me actually go to project templates, smart classrooms, okay. Assume in a classroom, there's a light and a fan, okay? Now, I want to start the fan. I want to turn on the lamp, on or off, whatever, okay? Now I said, ask the command and say, if the answer is turn on the fan, then turn on the fan. If the answer is turn off the fan, then turn off the fan. Okay, let's see if that it, it does what it's supposed to do. I'm going to say turn on the fan. There we go. Turn, sorry, turn on the lamp, right? What did I do? I just dragged and drop. I didn't tell it what to do. I just had some drag and drop and it works, but now this is where I told it, if this is exactly turn on the fan, then do it. Now see what happens. Turn on the fan is also, I said fan off, right? Which in our home, we normally would say turn off, fan off, but it's not doing anything. Why? 
Sir, that is because we haven't programmed the code for that. The so, command is turn you have to told it to be fed off. What did the code turn off? Turn off the code. Correct. The code. I haven't programmed it. Programmed. But let me ask you a question. You need to write code. Right. right. Let me ask you a question then. Do I have to tell it every single way? Turn on the fan, fan off, fan on, please turn yes. off. Yes. Everybody, do I have to do that? Yes. Yes. If you're doing it. Yes. Yes. Can I make this smart mm -hmm. enough? Okay. Can you do it? Can I give you basic phrases and can you learn from it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll I don't think you have to. Um, if you I said, do, okay, if I'm going to highlight a certain word like uh -huh. off or on, since you're using those in your sentence, you can. Uh -huh. it'll learn from just saying like, okay, this person said off, so they want me to turn off the fan. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Now let's I'll show you how to do it. It says Start. if off is in the text, you can do that. I know. Yeah. Correct. So what I said is I'm going to train this one, train this machine to behave, to understand certain words, right? I said, what does a fan, when do you turn on the fan? I said on fan, fan on, turn the fan on, turn the fan on, please. Please turn fan on. And you could give a little more information to it. it I'm saying, okay, if it's a fan off, then the way I can say is these five ways. Lamp on, these five ways. There could be my way I speak is different. You guys, you speak is different, right? Every I don't have to teach everything. But what I'm going to do now is I said, okay, these are the things you need to learn from this. I'm going to go back. And this is all in Smart Machine Learning, the website I'm going to send you. You guys can test this out. I'm saying, okay, I'm giving you the data. Go ahead and start learning. It said, fine. I learned from what you said. Do you want to test it now? I said, okay. What did I say? Fan on. This, you want to test it. It says, absolutely with 100% confidence, I can tell you I can perform this command and turn on the fan. Right? Now, watch what happens. In the previous example, did I type this? I did not. No. Okay. Right? We can go check. Did I say fan O N N anywhere? Nope. No. Say so learn and test. I want to say fan on. Good. Say so test. It's a good night. Give it a minute. It's done on. I need to go. Okay. It said with 100% confidence. Yes, you're absolutely right. Now I said fine. Because as I was typing, I was a little bit lazy. I didn't pay much attention. I was typing too fast. But it still recognized it. So with 82% conference, I can still do what you're telling me to do. Let's see this. Still 85%. I never told it to every single word that I'm going to type. But it's learned the pattern of it. But watch what happens when I do this. It's dropped down the confidence, right? So there is certain learning pattern it has to do. Deep network will go deeper into that and say, okay, he means fan on, he means it's dark, I can learn all those things. But that's the basic idea of machine learning, right? I didn't type everything, but I gave him basic set of information. So I start to learn from it and behave what I want you to behave, right? If I go in here, previously, remember I get a fan on, fan off, it didn't work. Now I'm going to say, okay, let's see, does it work? Turn on. Aha. Uh -huh. Turn off. Stop. Right? Turn on. Still works. Right? Pretty cool, right? I didn't tell it everything, but yeah. like a human being, it's now learned, oh, what actually means is turn on the fan. Even though I typed it wrong, we actually meant fan on. And the way I speak, you might speak a little, my son speaks a little bit different in Maxim, but it still can recommend, I'm like, okay, right? So these are some examples and some couple of demos I wanted to show you what machine learning is all about, right? There are tons of examples out there, things that you guys can go, can learn from it, and then do play with your own things, okay? Just be careful what you type. 
okay i want you to be careful what you type what you test out with okay like always be careful like i said when you talk machine learning everything you're typing everything you're doing is being recorded and going somewhere to be picked up right so just be mindful of what you're doing like i tell my son always always assume that is being picked up in the net's going somewhere because something is looking and analyzing it you go to alexa and say play a song how does it know to wake up and play the song because it's being picked up it's being analyzed so every single word you're speaking in the house is being picked up so you you guys have to also think all those things okay i say computers are a friend a machine is a friend please do not make it a substitute what i mean by that is it's very easy for my son when i ask him okay what is 20 plus 25 he immediately says like hey siri what is 20 plus 25 what happened there siri will give you the answer but like his human brain machine is now start processing it it's not learning it's not getting sharp enough so i always tell my kid use a machine as your friend not as a substitute the more you tell your brain the more you work the more you guys learn sharper you become and the better you will be able to create programs much much complicated this in your life than what we are showing you now okay presentation wise that's all i had saigaru that's all i had for the presentation wise so in case they want to uh, go to q and a session and you know can we start the q and a session is it time enough let's go and take some questions on the issue sure so if anyone have any questions so please uh, raise your hand so that uh, ravindra garu will ask you to hand raise hand down and uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question so that he can reply thank yeah. you sage please go ahead so um can you hear me yes i can so for example if i show an apple and it says this is an orange and i said it's wrong it was wrong and then it was it said it was apple and they said yes will it rip, remember it is an apple forever until the battery or sim card is taken out or is it a different answer that's a very good question actually all things have um, a small amount of memory which stays in a hard disk right it writes to it right your computer is right to it when you turn on the power off your computer does it lose what you typed in in your word no right no yeah it will have- so there is something which it it's a place i don't not going to details but it remembers let's say in today's world hopefully you don't have to worry in your phones your contact my phone right your parents yes. phone you type in a number right it's stored yes. there even though your your battery may go down to zero you will still have the phone when you turn it on right same thing okay so um isn't i have a- another question sure um does the machines have their own language like the computer machines are when we're talking machines we're talking computers here so down if you look at the very basic all the computer understands is ones and zeros which is a signal electricity being passed or yes or that's all it understands everything you write gets translated down into the bottom layer ultimately that's what computer understand whether it's a calculator whether it's like a big computer all those things understands only those two things so like electricity on okay. electricity off it's it's deep down but that's a very good question so i can write in english i can write in french all that gets translated down to those two things that it understands and then it starts to exist. but the difference is because of today's world and technology they are so fast right? yeah so um doesn't isn't there two things like a ram and a rom the i mean the ram and a hard drive the ram stores like short term and the uh, hard drive um even stores thing even though it's like shut the computer down and the ram is like only like what you're talking right now correct yes that is correct hard drive is where it stores it and now uh, in fact we have backups of hard drive there's a lot of things to it but yes for your right you're right um uh saigar i'm not sure if i can see everybody uh, shreyas i think you have a question so are there like different types of ai ml and dl 
there are there different types of ai ml yes there are a lot like ai is a very broad term right everybody throws that word out and says ai ai is just broadly speaking it's teaching a machine to become more intelligent from what i've shown you what i've given you what i've taught the machine right that that's what it's all about basically right and then i said there's learning supervised there's unsupervised then there is like machines are becoming very very complicated nowadays they the only thing that we are teaching you emotions to right what is it one big difference between human and machine right now it's emotions i can look at a person and tell how sad or how happy he is machines are getting there it's neural networks but let's not get into that but yes there are lot to it a um, lot of different things inside of ai that you can learn right yes ashmita so if i told the machine after i came from school on monday that i wanted it 60 degrees in the next day which was tuesday i told it like a different amount each all week week like uh -huh. um and i did that same for like the entire week but it was different each day can it do it the same without me telling it the next week yes to an extent yes if you keep changing it it will start to learn from it right because typically you're not going to if you tell it i can always program a uh, computer say if it's monday make it 60 if it's tuesday make it this right if i explicitly tell it it will do it if you do one or two days then it learns for the other days right you don't have to tell it monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you could right you could explicitly tell it if it's monday do this if it's tuesday do this also a little bit further you can say if it's monday make it 65 or 70 what is comfortable but also it can go back up and say what is the weather like today is the weather hot or cold right it can also take that piece of information and adjust accordingly if you want it right previous thermostats to your example used to be simple thermostats in the home where you tell it to your example monday i want this tuesday i want i had to put everything into it I to tell it Monday I want this at ten o'clock. If you don't tell it, it won't do it, right? Now the same thermostats are smart to learn from all these things. It's not only taking your input, but I can also look at the weather and figure it out. And say, oh, he doesn't want it to because it's already outside it's hot. He doesn't want seventy five. The home will automatically go to seventy five, right? And it doesn't turn on the heater on for you. Okay. Yeah, Ra Ravindra Gar, like we have some questions in the chat, Andy. So we'll take. Yeah. And then we'll go to the kids. Yes. So one question from Harini Garu. And uh, so many smart devices around us, all of mm -hmm. them connected to internet. How do we know what is good and what is bad? Zingaru, uh, 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 I'll say this, um, like I tell my kids all the time, like everything has pros and everything has cons to it, right? Somebody was asking me the question the other day. I said, when you connect anything to an internet, right? Everything that you're punching into it is going to somewhere. So please be careful as to what you want to send, right? You want everything to be heard. There is a different field now emerging called AI ethics, actually. Okay. Uh, since the kids are there, just since you asked something called AI. So what is good? That is what AI ethics is coming to picture. How far do we want these machines to go good? But as a general rule in my home, and I'll be honest, in my home, I have turned off a lot of devices. I'm very careful where I place the devices. Assume somebody's like, we all know that, right? For the kids also, like I was saying, please be careful what you type in, in chats, everything is getting analyzed. So if you are using it for some productive purposes, I would say that's good. The kids are learning like this scratch is very good too. You can learn it. You can build on it but please be careful what you're using it for. You have to make a judgment call as to how much data do you want to give it. In general, I, I personally, I'm not, I use it, but I also know where to cut. I don't want all my information to be going somewhere because of hacking and everything, right? I hope that's what um, you were asking. If not, please let me know. So one more question, Andy. So what is the difference between human intelligence and artificial intelligence? Good. Human intelligence. Humans, like I said, are the best machines ever created by created. Okay. Difference basic. There are a couple of things. Like 
to the very high level, emotions are one thing, right? You can look at, your mom can look at you, immediately tell you, you're sad, you're hungry, right? Humans can still process a lot of information, right? Computers are still machines which you have to teach them. Human, you don't have to teach every single aspect of it. Humans adapt quickly, right? If you're driving a car, we'll drive Tesla uses artificial intelligence to a lot extent, but even then there are limits and boundaries. A human, simply put, if you put a human in a situation, he can intelligently think for himself, even though we have not taught him. Machines are getting there, but still not there. An emotional quotient. Machines, there is, like I said, AI ethics, but humans can make the distinguish between what is right and what is wrong, right? So th that's, that's the fundamental difference. You have to tell a machine what to do. Humans learn, adapt, behave, and make the right and wrong choices without being explicitly every time told to do something, right? Yeah. So next question, Andy. So, how do we identify zero one? How do we identify yeah. zero one? Yeah, yeah, that's my question. Okay. Um, under the body, you learn. learn I, I, without getting into too much of details, right? Um, zero and one is like a, speaking in a very deep down level knowledge at a computer basic level. It's do I want the current to flow or not? That's what zeros and ones indicate at that a deep down level, right? You yeah, don't have to, luckily, you don't have to, the things have gotten so advanced. Previous in years when we grew up, we used to write in that, then it evolved. Nowadays, you guys don't have to write anything, right? Yeah, okay. It automatically translates that into those machine language and does what it needs to do. You're telling it a plain English, hey, turn on the fan. But what does that even do? Under the hood, it's getting translated down to that turn off, turn on thing on computer level and then yeah. being used. How does it uh, identify zero one? Like how does it know, okay, zero one means you should turn on the fan. Okay, zero one means you should turn on the light. How okay. does it identify? Um, all these words that you write, there is a, a byte code, bit code, uh, and it's a little bit more than what we have time for, but every word you write is getting broken down into sub pieces. And there is like a algorithm advance of ones and zeros to figure out what the final answer is, right? When you write a fan, the word fan doesn't mean much to a computer, right? We can we say we identify it, but it breaks it down internally to say F stands for one zero 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 one. This one stands for zero one zero zero one. It adds all those and there's an algorithm runs and says, okay, final is this, final is that, right? So that's how it does, but it'll take a little more understand, but that's a very good and interesting question. I like the way you approached it. Um, I wish we had more time, but I would say to your, to your parents, Google a little bit, okay? How machines work or how simple computers um, work and you should be able, they question. should give us short videos of it actually. Me too. Uh, can like, you, um, I just had a question. Sure. Um, so if, um, so there's, um, a, for a computer, there's also a language like code, Java, like Python, like that. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about machines, what code can you use for different machines? Is there a whole different code or is it the same as computers and the devices? Same. You use when we talk of machines, it's the same. When I talk of machines, it's nothing but a computer. A computer is nothing but a machine, right? the same you can write in java you can write what python is coming up today there are other languages that you can use today right you can write in any language when we say machines we are not we are just talking of computers right it's not just physical that you laptops it's a, it's a bigger machine basically that's what a robot is nothing but a machine it is a computer also because it can do computations within it that's what it is all about right this picture that you're seeing is a machine but it's also small it's a it's a very powerful computer because it can process things in there. That's what, when I say computers, machines are interchangeable. Robots, are they computers? Yes. Are they machines? Yes. Right? That's what it is. Um. Yeah, and I had one more question. Just yeah. like how we um, learn, just like you said, computers can learn as well. But what if we just put them in an environment that they do not know about 
can they learn from um, around themselves, like what the setting they're in, or they're like um, the ecosystem they're in? Can they learn that? They are getting there. They are getting. That's what the deep learning neural networks and stuff. They are learning to adapt. I was saying like, like there's a deep learning where even though that situation has not happened, it can start to learn based on past experience and predict data, but it's an evolving thing. It's pretty advanced right now. That's one difference between, like I said, between a human and a machine, right? Humans, based on the experience, based on things, react more, can figure things out quicker, even though it's very unorthodox, but they can do it. But are machines capable? We are getting there. We are reaching there. They are starting to put into situation like cars, for example, not everything in car. They're learning from the data they are getting and say, okay, if I run prime thing here, I need to stop. If I see an object, I need to stop, period. Right? That kind of stuff. Uh, Ravindra Gar, like you have okay, 15 um, more minutes a... to take sure, this sure. question, Sandy. Excuse me, I have a question. Sure. One, sec a one question. second, one second, one second. So do you have time, Andy? 15 minutes? Sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay, Andy. Okay. Yeah, like next, I like, like, you know, we, we have a limited time, guys. So 15 minutes, I would like to take the questions. So next, I would like to go to Atish. Can you unmute yourself and ask the question? One question per person. Uh, my question is that it's like if you're driving a car and like a few miles away, you'll see a vent. Like, and then like if the machine, if the machine like tracks that down, would that may be machine learning? I'm sorry, I missed part of your question. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if you were driving a car and a few miles away, there was uh -huh. an event, and, like, if the machine tracked that event down, mm -hmm. would that be machine learning for the machine? It, it is. There, there's a, that's an interesting question, actually, because cars are... Um, there, there's, a, uh, there's an industry which cars are now learning to talk to each other. <laughs> But it's a very good question. The, the data is coming in, it is done, but they are talking where cars, if a nearby car is going, it can talk and figure out how far are you from me? Do I keep away from you? But yes, it's part of machine learning, the car itself, but it's sending, it could be sending the data and the data can be fed to these things like, hey, there is something happening. So don't go that route. That's what Google map does, right? It just picks it up and says, hey, there's an accident. You don't need to turn right. If you turn right, it'll be half an hour more, right? It's all happening in the background for you guys, but that's a very good question. Yeah, thank you. And uh, next we will go to Rushil Bandla. Can you unmute yourself and ask the question? Uh, yes, so I took math test earlier today and once I did a question, the, qu the next question got a bit harder than the first. Would that be unsupervised machine learning or supervised machine learning? What do you think? That's a very good question, actually. You put me in a fix now. It's a very good question. What would, we, what would you think it has? Um, I think it was unsupervised machine learning because it saw what I was doing. And so it thought maybe hmm, I should give him something more difficult to keep him. Busy. Yes. It is it is learning from what the thing is. If you give a question, well, you can also it? program and say, if he does this person type of a question, then go it. But I can also give it data through it and so unsupervised. Just use that and try to create a harder question for him, right? Isn't so, it technically You guys have a really interesting question, data. something I have to think about now. Sorry, I'll go to the next one. Like, you know, uh, can you... Uh, Praharshita Undavalli, can you unmute and ask your question? Um, so when a virus gets into the computer, does it disrupt the code? Like does the one, um, 0101 code, like does a num another number come into it or what actually happens when a virus gets into the computer's code? So virus is, um, I'll keep it a very high level. Virus is another program, right? Virus is another program. It just overrides what you're telling it to do and then takes over the system. But ultimately, it's going to that zero one level. It's going to execute the same level in the machine. Machine only understands those in the bottom level, right? But virus is just another program, some bad program, to be very honest, that somebody created with the wrong intent of doing some harm, right? That's what a virus is all it is. It's another program somebody created 
to do something bad to somebody. But ultimately, it is the same program. It's going under the doing the same zeros and ones. All it's doing is it says he is telling me to type in word. I will not let him type it in. It's going to override that part of it or not allow you to do something. That's what a virus is all about. It's a different type of virus, but just to give you a broad idea of what it is and what happens. But ultimately, it still goes to that bottom level. Everything has to go to bottom level to do it because that's all the chips, the things that they understand. But there is a lot to it. I'm being keeping it simple for you guys because I don't want to scare or complicate too much for you guys. Um, so would the virus also affect the machine learning? Like while the machine's learning, if the virus comes, would it affect it? Yes, it could. I could write a program to say, try to create fake data into it, right? So what is machine learning? If the data that is getting fed is wrong, then its prediction is wrong. What I could write up virus to say, if this program is running, just give some random things to it. So that if the machine takes it, it will try to, its results are different now, right? And it's using that to predict. There is there's another piece which it can beat out the bad data and all that stuff, but in a very simple way, yes, I can mess with things. But nowadays things are very complicated and sophisticated. They're able to lock it down. They're able to do a lot of things to it. We don't just expose computers to the outside world. Your parents will tell you all that, but in general, when we do in our, in our companies, it's not that easy for you to get things happen, but yes, simply put, I can write to overwrite things and make it go bad. Can you like send the two links into the chat? Oh yes, I will. Yeah. I will surely send it in chat. And the next question, like Jeswita, can you please unmute yourself and ask the yeah. question? So, um. So you have a device like Alexa and you drop a uh, drop it on the ground and uh, Alexa might as well get damaged. Uh -huh. Would that affect its machine learning? Like whatever it already learned, it would be storing it. So would it affect it? Um, so let me put it this way. Alexa is not, it is sending it back to Amazon. You know Amazon, right? You order all this stuff, you order your toys, you order stuff, right? It's not storing everything in it. It's just taking that it quickly sends it upwards to Amazon servers and say, hey, what do you want me to do with this, right? It's got only small pieces of information. That's why I tell my kids, be very, very careful with what you're talking to Amazon, what you're talking to Alexa, you're talking to all these devices. They're taking all this and somewhere Amazon is storing forever, right? And you have no control over it. You cannot go it. Interesting. Like if I teach Alexa to recognize my voice, because that's a function available, would it be storing it? Like, would it be taking it to like the Amazon servers? It, it does to an extent, because once you say something to it, it doesn't have all that. In, the, some pieces are there, but other pieces, it still has to go and pick. Because if it's something new, there are huge machines running on Amazon site, right? They are very, very fast because how is it that I talk and it immediately gives me an answer, right? It requires a lot of processing power. So some things happen locally. Something is says, as soon as I say, hey, Alexa, it wakes up. What does it mean? It's not that it's only listening to those two words. It's listening to everything that's going on. It just, it says, when it happens, pick it up, send it up, figure it out. But it's so fast for you, you don't even realize. The best way for you example, I would say, turn off the internet of Alexa. Okay, cut off, tell your dad to turn off Alexa's internet and then try to speak and see what happens. Will I, it react uh, to what it does? That happened. So we the internet was gone uh -huh. and uh, we talked to Alexa and uh -huh. Alexa's like, uh, you know, the circle around it that's in color. Yes. Yes. It turned red. Yes. It said, sorry, uh, something, something, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And it took a couple of seconds to react because I Correct. think it was trying to, uh, fix the problem by itself, maybe, yes. or see what's going on. It's trying to be smart, but like exactly what you said, it doesn't know where to send it. It's trying to send the data and it cannot, and it doesn't have all the answers. So it has to send it up because it's, the answers are huge. You could ask anything under the sun. How far is Pluto? How, how, what is the weather today? It doesn't have all the answers stored. It's sending up and coming it down. 
you cut off the only link that is about to go to the Amazon. And he said, you can go to your father and ask the question. I'm like, oops, now what do I do? Human, that's what the difference is. If human were to ask you, say, what do you want in the song? At least he'll give you some answer. That's where the thing is. So that's what exactly happened in your case. So um, last question, is human intelligence the greatest type of intelligence compared to machines, computers? My personal take, again, people might take it. I always say humans are the, we created the machines. Who created the machines? We humans did. did. Humans react. Humans know how to emotionally attach, right? There are a lot of things humans do. We are teaching machines to do that, but that's another AI ethics I was mentioning is how far do we want to let the machines take over, right? You've seen movies like where they take over. That's over-dramatized, but in the sense, I consider human, that's why I was telling you earlier, please use all these machines as your friend, say 30 into 40. Don't stop your brain from working. Don't always rely on these things to say, give me the answer, give me the answer. It's easy, but your brain then doesn't get sharp enough. I always consider the human brain as the best machine ever, ever created. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next question, like Annapurna, uh, can you please uh, unmute and ask the question? Um, can you like send that uh, to machine, machine learning for kids? Yeah, I just uh, put it in the scratch. You just take off the machine learning and then you should get to that. I will go to the machine learning website and- um, It's not like working. Uh, the link is not working? It should create a new scratch, right? No, like, no, like I can't, I don't know how to get to ooh, the machine learning for kids. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You do projects, okay? I'll keep it simple. You do projects, add a new project, okay? And like I said, there is uh, just going there. Let me see if I can go back to the retrain. How to use? Go go to the link I sent. Maybe this is the link. Get started, and you can create projects. Templates are already here. If you click on smart classrooms, okay. You can do this. There are project templates in here. I'll try to post the other ones how to use, but you can get started. This is a step-by-step -step of what you need to do to create it. Everything. Everything is there. Get started. Then it goes to all these pages. You, you this start. really took me to like the scratch screen instead of that screen you were on. Oh, no. Let me delete this. So here. Go to projects. And this is my project that I created. Okay. You can start adding your projects doing that. I'll try to post that link also in WhatsApp group if possible. So maybe your parents can, you know, uh, let you guys. I'm on just on normal scratch, not the machine learning. The, those are, if you go to normal scratch, these templates that you're doing, okay. You can you you will have to log in and create an account because then it there is there's a couple of steps. I'll try to uh, send the links to that where you will have to create an account. There is something called API keys which your parents can help you do that if you're using certain type of projects. But beyond that, you can create it. But I will try to send the link in the WhatsApp too. I'm like, can you send the link of like on the site that you are you just are on? This one. Yeah. So you can do projects, you can do worksheets. What are the pretense So describe? So see, if I go to worksheets, okay, here are everything. If you go into here, you can go into classrooms, you can go into each one of them, smart classroom. And then this one, if you click on these ones, this is how I did it, okay? Just open this, click on this. This will open a step-by-step -step instruction and I'll show you the here. How do I go creating about it? It'll give you, go here, do this. It's very simple. I like this site very much. I would advise you to try this. Let me see if I can paste this. Click on here, machine learning, and then you go to worksheets, okay? 
click on worksheets over there and then uh, you can go from there. You have different, different projects. You can click on the project link, go into the project and you have step-by-step -step instructions to do that. Okay. Let me paste this also for you. Uh, no. So I got to anything, any other One questions you have? Mm, you're unmuted. Any other things, you guys? Or are we good? Hmm? Can you share the link to the uh, ML uh, machine learning for kids? Yeah, I pasted it in the chat. This guy's chat. <laughs> sort of lagging out. Paste it in the chat. You can go there and then you can click on the pre trained links, and there you'll have like go to projects, click on pre, go to that link, go to this link. This is the primary link I'm going to send you, okay? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, uh, all the questions answered, and I think no okay, one may have it. Actually, well, I, well, I can't get to it. Uh, I can't get click. to it. Click on the last link. Maybe it's blocked on your computer or something. Check with your dad. He should be able to get you to that link. You could also just search uh, machine learning for kids on Google and the It'll website. Pop it up. Yeah. Uh, Shrihit Palla, can can you ask your question? So, uh, so humans can create um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and they create machines to make things easier for them, right? So yes. when machines get artificial intelligence, will they be able to, and they like they start to think like humans, will they also like be able to create their own, like um, their own things that will help them do their tasks? That's a good, yes. Yes and no. And I hope they don't go to such an extent they start facing us, but that's what deep learning is about. It's like making them more and more like humans where they can start to think for themselves, right? The humans start to think for themselves. That's what we do. We sit down and think of a problem. You may not have realized that math problem. You might have changed the things, but then you start to think, oh, okay. That's where we are making computers go or machines go, where they start learning based on what they learn and then come up with a solution. That's what deep learning all, all is about. It's like getting more and more like humans. Okay, thank more intelligent. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. Yeah. Uh, thank thank you uh, all the kids. Uh, I think like now we we are uh, going to close the session soon. Uh, we are going to have the thanking uh, note and a thanking comments. Uh, Naga, uh, are you there? Naga, like, can you give some thank you notes? Yeah, yes, yeah, Sai. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sai. Uh, thank you, Rajagaru, uh, for uh, conducting this session. And also, thank you all, and uh, good evening, and again. And also, I see, like, use participation on the time, like, one of the time, 225 more, more members. The people are dropping. Uh, I know it's a weekday and people are going for dinner and all. But uh, it's a, such a useful session. And uh, it's uh, try to learn Telugu language too with the machine language. We encourage uh, as a Telugu people. And uh, there is a movie, Telugu movie, Robo. It kind of explain like uh, what is the uh, pros and concern. Yeah, yeah, pros and concern. What will be the happen without the human touch, uh, the human emotions and all those, uh, what the machines do and the key, what will happen the machine la language or robo or whatever it to the destructive manner instead of constructive manner and uh, being a good citizen and constructive sort of society, uh, it can happen bad, do the bad things. Don't go to that and also let me explain my experience and my learning uh, correlate with the human, like my experience with the machine language. So I ran a restaurant and uh, in my restaurant, 
always uh, like the good menu or good recipe always paste it in the uh, note in the restaurant every chef follow the same thing but always with the uh, you know the human or uh, rush or emotions or and that mood or depends on that uh, sometimes he may put more salt sometimes he may put less salt sometimes he put like spices even though there is formula and you know there is a lot of factors affect human brain but the uh, recently uh, the telugu people only introduced the robo chef in chicago i know the people they are from tana too but they introduce the robo chef what does it do is it exactly put it irrespective of uh, they, they don't have any emotion or anything right so they follow the exact formula respect of the time they don't get tired or anything so any time you get the same uh, order same taste and everything same the sort like uh, in my restaurant that what i experienced and someone did that applied to the human in, uh, human thing to the machine and they introduce good robo i believe i want to try that when i go to the yes, chicago that restaurant yeah um thank you thank you naga and uh, thank you thank you ravindra garu thank you so much for all your time like you know it's a week day but you took all uh, a lot of time to explain the kids and the next generation kids who is going to who are the telugu pride so thank you so much uh, and uh, if you want to add any points ravindra garu before closing this um thanks i got thank nagaru ajgaru uh, really uh, happy that you i got an opportunity and i'm really happy with lo- so many kids interested and the questions you know i always say some of these questions sometimes baffle us too because we adults sometimes don't think the way you guys you have much more broader spectrum sometimes i am happy that you asked me those questions because something's for me to think about and i hope the session help i'm hoping that you guys will go back um and try these things take your help your parents understand what is good and bad and then learn from it because this was becoming the future okay thank you and uh, all the kids like you know uh, ravinder garu already provided the links he also provide the links in the whatsapp group as well uh if anybody misses the chat so that you can look at to the whatsapp group and wh- whatever the recording version we will have we will provide maybe in a day or two so that you can go through whoever the misses this session they can go through the session recorded version and uh, thank you very much and uh, we wanted to thank you to the thana leadership uh, anjay choudhury garu and uh, raja kaskurti garu community coordinator so thank you so much and thanks to all the thana leadership thank you everyone thank you guys have a good day thank, thank you. you bye thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye.